I have a book, a special book from my friend, mm, Frau Goldman, you know her as. She gave me a very nice little gift. I love a good book. She wrote, Happy New Year. We got this, like we got this, because this is a book about a spelling bee. So since we're focused on our spelling words, I thought I'd read it to you and we'd all get to enjoy it. It's by Stacey Abrams, who is an important American in our world, but it's a book she wrote about her own childhood. It's called Stacy's Extraordinary Words, illustrated by Kit Thomas. Stacy's Extraordinary Words. And I love a book with a good book jacket. I always find it interesting that the book jacket looks a lot like the cover of the book. Stacy's Extraordinary Words. That's our title page. Here we come. It's a dedication page. I love a dedication page because it makes me think about the author and the illustrator and how it's their work, but they take time from their family and friends and, and their life to do this important work. And so this is a chance for them to give a little shout out. And so Stacey Abrams wrote, to my first storytellers, mom and dad, to my bibliophile siblings all, and to our newest generation of readers, Jordan, Faith, Cameron, Ryan, Aaron, and Devin. So that's, she's thanking her family. And this is the illustrator. To those I love most, mom, dad, my brother, Desmond, and Garfield, the little cat who saved my life. Sounds like a very important cat. All right. Stacy loved words. She loved to read and write and say them. She adored fun words, long words. Make sure I'm framed in here so you can see it. She adored fun words, long words, unusual words, words with wonderful histories and weird combinations. Whenever Stacy learned a new word, it was like making a new friend. First, she would find the dictionary then she would look up where the word had come from and learn its secrets. Did any of its letters hide and, say, and stay quiet? Like the pea in ptarmigan, a bird that lives in cold northern regions. Or were they strong like the eye in bright? I like the idea of the letters taking on character traits like being strong or silent. Next, she wrote the word in her special notebook of extraordinary words. She practiced how to arrange the letters just right, how to sound them out. That's because she loved spelling interesting words most of all. Onomatopoeia, pop. And there is her, you can see her notebook of extraordinary words. With her favorite words, she would try to remember their quirks. What made them special? When she saw a super long word like onomatopoeia, a funny word to describe the sounds of other words, she had to jump and sway. Words like duckling made her grin. Persnickety tickled her tongue. Try that, say persnickety, persnickety. Someone's that pers someone that is persnickety they're, mm, they're a little particular. They have a certain way they like to do things. They're a little, my son might say I'm persnickety sometimes because I want things done my way. You would never say that about me. I'm not always that persnickety, but sometimes. Sometimes we can all be persnickety. All right. Sometimes Stacy thought that words understood her better than people did. When she sat by herself during recess, they never teased her about being quiet or about being clumsy when she fell, or awkward when the joke in her head came out wrong. Oh, that has happened to me. When she read books under the covers, words never told her to go to sleep. Words understood why she was grumpy or anxious. In fact, words helped her explain what she was feeling, if only to herself, right? It's words that explain the zones we're in. They help us think about our feelings and help us explain why we're feeling, why we're feeling what we're feeling. One day, Stacy's teacher, Mrs. Blakesley, 
asked her to wait after class. She squirmed in her seat because she was afraid. Petrified, another way to say really, really afraid. Usually, the teacher only kept a student after class because of a blunder, a mistake. A blunder is a mistake. There's her teacher, Stacy. Mrs. Blakesley called Stacy to her desk and she returned her spelling test. A big red hun 100 sat at the top of the page. The teacher asked her, do you know what a spelling bee is? A really smart insect, Stacy joked. <laughs> the teacher smiled. A spelling bee is a contest where students compete to spell as many words correctly as they can. I would like for you to participate. Stacy couldn't believe it. Who else will be there? I am nominating you and Jake. The spelling bee is next week. Whoa, that's not quite a lot of time to prepare. But seems like Stacy might be practicing with words a lot. So maybe she'll be ready. Stacy's excitement suddenly evaporated. Jake was not her friend. He was a bully who knew words too. Just yesterday, he had used a complicated word that made Suki cry. Last week, she heard him say something cruel to Zivko about his accent. Stacy thought it was stupendous that Zivko knew words in two different languages. Stacy knew as many words as Jake did. She wanted to say something when he said mean things to her friends, but she was intimidated, scared. Because sometimes he said hurtful things to her too. She wished she had used her clever words to help Suki or Zivko or herself by speaking up. Perhaps at this spelling bee, she would be braver. At the spelling bee, she would not be silent. So she has decided she's going to participate. And she has decided she wants to be an upstander, not a bystander. She wants to stand up for her friends using her words. All week long, Stacy studied her spelling words from school and the ones she kept in her notebook. Sesquipedalian. Still, the spelling bee felt as far away as the longest word she had ever seen. Sesquipedalian, a fancy way to describe words with lots of syllables. So words with lots of syllables are called sesquipedalian. That is a new word for me. I've never heard that word before in my 46 years of life. Oh, the days of the week were monotonous, boring, kind of all the same, torturous, Oh, just horrible torture and sluggish. They went by slowly, slowly. Every hour felt longer and longer. Stacy wished for the week to whisk its days away. So it's taking a long time for that spelling bee to get here. That's what she's feeling. Finally, the morning of the spelling bee arrived. Stacy walked into the county library with her mother holding her hand tight. Mama gave her a big hug and whispered into her ear, just do your best. Your dad and I are very proud of you. Stacy followed her teacher to the room where the other students waited until it was time to go. Then they went onto a stage. The announcer explained the rules. Kids stepped up to the microphone one by one to get their word. If they spelled it right, the announcer told them so. But if they made a mistake, a bell would ring. The student would have to leave the stage. No do-overs. You got one chance, no mistake. If you spell it out loud wrong, it's wrong, even if you try to correct yourself. Stacy's turn finally came. Her stomach ached with nervous energy, but she was ready. Say the word dither. Sound it out, D 
dither. <coughs> Spell it. D I T H E R. That is correct. The announcer called on the next student and the next. <gasps> Finally, only three contestants remained. Stacy and Jake and a girl from another school. The girl went up to spell her word. Ding! She had spelled chocolate without the second O. <coughs> Uh-oh. <coughs> Sorry, reading's making me need a little water. We are down to our final two contestants, the announcer told the audience. Jake took a long time to spell except. Stacy got squeezed, but she remembered the lost letters she adored, like Q and Z. Jake tackled clambering, like you're climbing over something, clambering over something. Stacy conquered disengage. Then Jake defeated geometry. Stacy returned to the podium, ready to do battle with her next word. She repeated it. She pronounced it. She spelled it. I-N-S-T-A-N-T-A-N-I-O-U-S. -N -N Instantaneous. As she waited for the announcer, the bell dinged. I'm sorry. The proper spelling is... Stacy couldn't hear the rest of what he said. Tears filled her eyes. But she stayed on stage like a good sport as Jake got his trophy and she received her second place ribbon. Aww. Everyone congratulated Jake and so did she. Oh no, he's saying ha. Good job, Jake laughed and rolled his eyes. At least I know the difference between an I and E. Stacy felt embarrassed, but she refused to let Jake make her cry. Well, I misspelled my word, but I do know how to be courteous. You should try it. She turned away and went to find her mom. If today were like one of the stories Stacy loved most, she would have won. And Jake would have learned that words were a gift that shouldn't be used to hurt people. But things didn't always happen the way that way in real life. Sometimes change was harder. And it didn't happen right away. Stacy felt a hand brush at her cheek. It opened her fist and smoothed out the ribbon. Mama. She put a butterscotch candy on top, Stacy's favorite kind. You okay? There's her second place ribbon and her mom's giving her a little candy to try to make it a little sweeter. I lost, but you came so far, nearly to the very end. Not far enough. I got the letter wrong and I didn't win, I failed. You only fail if you stop, her mother reminded her. I know there's a word for that. You know it too. Do you guys know the word for not giving up? Stacy thought about one of her favorite words, perseverance, P-E-R-S-E-V-E-R-A-N-C-E, -E -E. exactly. So let's go home and learn more words. There's always next year. Stacy imagined all the words she had yet to meet, new words and new ways to speak up and help others. She'd find them all. No, mama, there's always tomorrow. You can see Stacy winning, graduation, and she became part of our government. 
Now, I like this book because there's an author's note, and we get to learn a little bit about the real author, the real main character of this book. So this is Stacey Abrams. That's a picture of her. She wrote, I love words. I can't remember ever not loving them. As a preschooler, when class ended, my parents were still hard at work. Luckily, I attended preschool on the college campus where my mother served as librarian. She would have us nap in the stacks as she continued to work, and I nestled with books and stories and words. Even today, the rich scent of a library or the waft of a freshly opened book makes me smile. Not only were words my companions, they were also my protectors. One day during first grade, the principal of Anniston Avenue Elementary fetched me from class and walked me outside to one of the trailers that lined the back of the school building. My next memory is of the door opening wide and a lovely woman greeting me, Mrs. Blakesley, my soon to be second grade teacher. Unbeknownst to me, I had been moved up a grade in the middle of the term. So she did first grade and second grade in one year. As a new kid in class, the strongest, most familiar sight was the books on the shelves near the front of the class. My teacher invited me to read as many of them as I wished. In those uneasy first days, while other kids played at recess, I read quietly, unsure of my place, until I opened the pages of a good story. There, I could hide from the older children who teased me and revel in the victories of others. When Mrs. Blakesley chose me for the spelling bee that year, her act of kindness nudged me out of the books and into a world I had never imagined. My first spelling bee combined my greatest joy and biggest fear, talking about words and making mistakes. More than 40 years later, these remain the stalwart axes against which I measure my growth. In that contest, I learned in front of a live audience that chocolate has two O's. When the bell dinged, I practiced stoicism before I knew of the concept. And I still recall my mom pressing the yellow candy into my hand, remembering that I, her second of six children, loved that color most. Because of that first lost spelling bee, followed by four more close calls until I claimed victory in sixth grade, I discovered how to merge my delight and my terror, realizing that failure is never more than an invitation to try again. Like Jake, some kids picked on me and others who were different. Over the years, I learned how to use my words to do good. Even when I am most afraid, I constantly strive to speak up especially when it makes me nervous. And if I am doing my very best, I make room for those who haven't discovered their superpowers yet. So she lets other people talk too. She makes space for other people to share their voice, share their words. If you wanna borrow this book, look at it in class, you can see all the extraordinary words in her notebook of extraordinary words. And if you want to know a little bit more about Stacey Abrams, here is a little information. Stacey Abrams is the three-time New York Times bestselling author of While Justice Sleeps, Our Time Is Now, and Lead From the Outside. She's an entrepreneur and a political leader, a tax attorney by training. She served 11 years in the Georgia House of Representatives seven as minority leader and became the 2018 Democratic nominee for governor of Georgia. She has launched multiple organizations devoted to voting rights, training and hiring young people of color and tackling social issues. She is the founder of Fair Fight Action, Fair Count and the Southern Economic Advancement Project. A small business owner, she, con she co-founded the financial services firm Now Corp and Sage Works Productions, Inc., a media company. She has received degrees from Spelman College, the LBJ School of Public Affairs at the University of Texas at Austin, and Yale Law School. And there, whoops, there she is. You may recognize her from the news. Thank you for this great book, Frau Goldman. Very, very special book, Stacy's Extraordinary Words.